Dear brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Praise the Lord! It's the time to read Bible. Let's continue on Genesis thirty-five. Today we will go through verse fourteen to twenty. Verse fourteen, Jacob set up a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him, and he poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it. In Bethel, in Bethel, Jacob realized God is El Bethel, means God of Bethel, which is God is the God of God's house. He then named the place Bethel again. In Genesis twenty-eight verse seventeen, when he fled away from his brother Esau, he had a dream in which he saw a stairway, a a stairway, resting on the earth, and its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were, as ascending and descending on it. And then God spoke to him, when he awoke from his sleep, verse seventeen. He was afraid and said, "How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven." So Bethel is not only meaning the house of God, but also the gate of heaven. From Bethel, you could enter heaven, which also means, when we come to the house of God, it is also the star point of going into heaven. Jacob's second time went back to Bethel. He asked his household to get rid of the foreign gods, to purify themselves, and to change their courses. In Bethel. Jacob had experienced God's will. His spiritual life had been dealt with, like grapes are crushed for making wine. So a drink that belonged to heaven could be found from him. Therefore, when he set up a stone pillar in Bethel again, he not only poured oil on it. Which means fulfilled by the Holy Spirit, but also poured out a drink offering on it. A drink offering means we are able to empty ourselves on top of everyone's offering. So Jacob began to bring his whole family to follow God, to live in a healthy church life. When others were able to give offerings to the Lord, Jacob saw himself as a drink offering poured on the stone pillar. God's best will to Jacob's children was Jacob became a stone pillar of the church. Being a stone pillar of the church, Jacob not only poured oil. But also poured out a drink offering. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, the first church was built up in Jerusalem. Then Peter, James, and John had been called the stone pillars of the church. Today, the Lord is still looking for some of His children who are willing to consecrate to be the stone pillars. Bethel is the gate of heaven. You begin to experience something that belongs to heaven. In Bethel, you have subjective experience that is living in the fellowship with God, which is Hebron. Every believer sees the house of God and the taste of flavor of heaven in Bethel. But how can we always stay in Bethel? The answer is we need to keep living in the fellowship with God. Then, verse sixteen. Then they moved on from Bethel. Actually, their dis- destination was Hebron, 
because at that time Jacob's father Isaac lived in Hebron. Abraham lived on、uh, Abraham lived in Hebron for the longest period of his life, and also he was buried in Hebron. The calf of Machpelah. Abraham's wife Sarah was also buried in the calf of Machpelah. That also means they were in Hebron, having fellowship with God, and even they died. They still have fellowship with God until the Lord comes again. Hebron was also the place where Abraham's son Isaac lived. The longest in his life. In addition, Jacob had experienced the Lord's greatest revelation in Bethel. He had to go to Hebron after all to stay in his subjective experience with God. If you look at the map of the land of Canaan, Hebron is in the south of of Bethel. If you keep going south. From Bethel to Hebron, you might arrive in. You might arrive in, Ephrath first. Ephrath is right next to Bethlehem. So verse sixteen. Then they moved on from Bethel, while they were still some distance from Ephrath. Rachel began to give, to give birth. And had a great difficulty. If wrath means fruitfulness, at the time Rachel was pregnant and began to give birth. In the beginning, Rachel was not bearing Jacob any children. She even said to Jacob, "Give me children, or I will die." But Jacob said to her. Am I in the place of God, who has kept you from having children? After her sister Leah born Jacob a sixth son, Genesis thirty verse twenty two to twenty four, then God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and opened her womb. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said. God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph, and said, "May the Lord add to me another son." Rachel did not hesitate to ask God for another son. So after many years, when they were in Bethel enjoying their wonderful church life, she became pregnant again. It should be a joy, but Rachel was having great difficulty in childbirth. Verse seventeen, and as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, "Don't be afraid, for you have another son." God had listened her. God had listened her prayer, for giving her another son. But also allowed her had great difficulty in childbirth. Verse eighteen. As she breathed her last, for she was dying, she named her son Ben Ami. Ben Ami means son of my trouble, but his father named him Benjamin, means son of my right, right hand. Jacob's spiritual life had been growing a lot, so he named his son Benjamin, son of my right hand. From son of trouble to son of right hand, because right hand is respectful and precious, we could also call it the son of restoration, because at that time. Jacob had experienced El, El, El Bethel, and even set up a stone pillar, poured oil on it, and also poured out a drink offering on it. He was well, he was willing to empty his him 
he was willing to empty himself. Rachel named the son the son of trouble, but Jacob had a different opinion. He thought the son had went through trouble, became became supreme, the son of right hand Benjamin. The birth of Benjamin actually foreshadows Jesus Christ. There was only one person who was born as the son of trouble, who is Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ came to this world be being made in human likeness, and became obedient to death, even death on a cross, for our sin, as the Redeemer. Jesus Christ was born as the son of trouble. However, God. However, God exalted him to the highest place, resurrected from death, and gave him the name that is above every name. He is a God's right hand, beca became the son of right hand, also the son of resurrection. Verse nineteen. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to. Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Rachel died and was buried in Ephrath, the fruitfulness place. Ephrath is also called Bethlehem, means the house of bread. The Bible did not record Jacob's emotion here. He did not cry for his wife Rachel's death. Verse twenty, over her tomb, over her tomb, over her tomb, Jake, over her tomb, Jacob set up a pillar, and to this day, that pillar marks Rachel's tomb. Mark, uh, marks Rachel's tomb. Jacob set up a pillar upon her grave. Moses, who was the author of Torah, the five books of Moses, told us the pillar of Rachel's grave is on to this day. It was the fourth pillar that Jacob had set up in his life, in in memory of Rachel. What does Rachel mean? Rachel means Jacob's nature, nature. Rachel means Jacob's natural choice. Many years ago, Jacob left his house land, flee to Laban in Haran. He met Rachel near a well in the field. He loved Rachel and were willing to serve Laban seven years to get Rachel. However, Laban Laban deceived Jacob. Marrying his older daughter Leah, because of the reason, Jacob worked for Laban another seven years. He served Laban for total of fourteen years because he was in love with Rachel. The fourteen years seemed like only a few days to him. Rachel was Jacob's election. Rachel died. Means Jacob's natural natural choice also died. As a believer, if our natural choice died, it will be our highest state of spiritual life. In Bethel, Rebecca's nurse Deborah died. That means the source that supply milk to Jacob's nature died too. Moreover, from Bethel to Hebron, we keep staying in the fellowship with God, and God will bring us to a stage that we could declare the death of the death of our nature. Jacob was in love with Rachel, and God gave Rachel to him by God's way and according to God's timelines. However. When the time was up, God took Rachel away. In the process, Jacob had been growing a lot. God, God has His own plan on us. God is faithful. 
He will not give us any burden beyond what we can, what we can bear. Once our spiritual life has grown, God will take our nature away, like Jacob when God took Rachel, his nature away. He did not cry loud because he understood the death. Because he understood God. Because he understood God's will, so he set up a stone pillar to witness the death of his nature. At the time, Jacob also realized he needed to follow God's will and God's timeline. So he gave himself to his sons, that we will read in the next chapters, and we will see Jacob's life went down because he did not rely on his nature anymore. Instead, he surrounded himself to the Lord. In addition, even though Rachel was jealous and overbearing in the beginning. But God blessed her for giving her a son, Benjamin, who was the foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Also, her other son, Joseph, lived out as an example of Jesus Christ. From Genesis chapter thirty-seven to chapter fifty, the Bible tells us Joseph's story. Joseph was the son of trouble in the beginning. He was sold by his brothers. He had been put in jail, but in the end, he became the son of right hand, and was in charge of Egypt in the right hand of Pharaoh. Two sons of Rachel became the best foreshadowings of Jesus Christ. Even though Leah was the one who was buried in calf, who was the only one. Who who was the one who was buried in cave of Machpelah with Jacob? Rachel was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. However, it is God's will because after seventy、uh, seventeen hundred years, the Son of God was born in Bethlehem. Rachel's tomb witnessed. Witnessed the birth of Jesus, Mary was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit, and gave birth in Bethlehem. However, King Herod gave orders to kill all the boys who were two years old and under in Bethlehem. Matthew chapter two verse eighteen, a voice is heard in Rama. Weeping and a great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Actually, God's will burying Rachel on the way to Ephrath was to witness was to witness the matters of the birth of Jesus Christ. After seventeen hundred years, the boys who were killed by King Herod were the son of trouble, like Rachel's son Benjamin. Even though Jacob and Rachel's sinful nature were strong, they were willing to follow the Lord. They had been through Shechem, Bethel, and finally to Bethlehem to witness. Their nature, their mature spiritual life, dear brothers and sisters, what is your nature in your life? One day we will set up a stone pillar to witness the death of our nature, and we will become a testimony of God. Let's pray. Oh Lord, Jacob's journey is also our journeys. We will become Israel. Through your making, on our journeys, please bless us and never leaving us alone. Please help us to give up our nature, 
to become your testimony. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.